Is the inner journey the most fascinating and exciting experience in your life? If it is, you're most probably a seventh chakra type, a yogi. The seventh type constitutes only 1% of the world's population. These individuals are the rarest type on earth and also the farthest from any familiar human activity. In fact, very few are as dispassionate as yogis or have their passion so intensely turned to inner worlds. Visiting their sphere is like reaching the top of the world. Though they are so rare, this 1% has left a tremendous mark on human culture and has influenced all the other six types. Think, for example, of the invention of meditation. Yogis communicate with the world in the most abstract way. They are purely meditative. They are like helium balloons without a string. They tend to remain distant and aloof up there. They have an airy looking structure and they seem quite fragile. They tend to have a veiled, distant and uninvolved gaze as if they are in their own world and do not share ours at all. Their entire being and expression is that of a renunciate. They are mostly calm since they have a very cool type of energy. They are harmless beings and seldom express anger or demands. They are gifted with a deep silence and need very little to cultivate it through spiritual practice and meditation. This type includes any kind of natural born renunciate or monk within any culture. They are most commonly found among those who seem naturally destined for monastic life. Usually they are drawn to separate from the busy human world at an early age. Their natural inclination is to turn their gaze inward, to meditate devote themselves to God or research the subtle and mystical domains. Yogis are most enthusiastic about studying the subjective domains and the subtler states of consciousness. They are quite uninterested in leaving any mark on human culture since they don't have a strong enough link to earthly life and all that is considered accomplishment in it. For a moment, try to see life as nothing more than a divine play. An eternal game of hide and seek in which spirit plays with itself through forms and energies. Yogis are guided by a strong intuition that they don't belong to creation, but rather to spirit. As far as they're concerned, their true existence has always remained purely spiritual. The world seems to them like a huge transparent object through which they look. They don't really see it. For yogis, life is singular and it is also simple. Happiness is a deep self-immersion in which they get in touch with the supreme bliss of their innermost being. They are drawn to a pure state, any state that seems pristine, spotlessly empty and endlessly refined, strikes them as more real. They want to become absorbed in space or light. This makes them unpretentious people with a simple psychology. When they are born into a specific tradition, they simply follow it. They use only a few words to express themselves. And they also don't have great ambitions. 
They have no passion for work and they are also unenthusiastic about acquiring possessions. They actually require very little money to support their way of life. Yogis naturally have a low libido and they battle very little with physical urges. They are also not attracted to romantic relationships and forming family units. Yogis are eternally ungrounded. They tend to float in life. Since they are incapable of managing hardcore realities, they can even be irresponsible and dependent. All this makes them constantly question their place in the world. To the outside world, they seem introverted, dreamy, spacey, and nearly transparent. So, if you are a seventh chakra type, here's a tip for you. Look for ways to live in the secular and cynical society of the Western world as your type. Be ready to be considered unacceptable and even crazy, but don't internalize this perception and begin to think that there is something wrong with you. The solution is a delicate middle point.